Hi guys, since we have now covered most of the theory around planning for and conducting a 16S rRNA gene sequencing experiment, I will be giving you a brief overview of the lab procedures for library preparation implemented by our group in the Division of Medical Microbiology at the University of Cape Town. Step 1 of our workflow is to design and plan our experiment based on our research questions at hand. Think of things like how many samples can be included in a sequencing run. By using barcoded primers, numerous samples can be sequenced simultaneously. This is referred to as multiplexing. The more samples included, the more cost effective the run, however, with reduced sequencing depth. We typically process up to 384 reactions per run, consisting of four 96 well plates. It is critical to have a library preparation manifest to document the position of each of your samples together with its barcode, the run number, and any other clinical or experimental data which you would like to summarize. We usually include this type of information in our sample ID in order to provide a unique sample ID identifier for downstream processing. Once you've decided which and how many samples are to be processed in a single run, you need to think about your plate layouts. It's always better to have your plate layouts ready prior to starting the lab workflow. Aim to have your samples positioned prior to extraction steps so that you can have your DNA extracted following your desired plate layout. This will save you a lot of time and help to avoid potential aliquoting errors if you have your DNA extracted using a pre-designed plate layout. Then, very importantly, include controls during your extraction, amplification and sequencing processes. In our lab, we typically include a within-run repeat. This is any specimen on a plate which is selected to be processed in duplicate on the same plate in order to measure within-run reproducibility. A between-run repeat is also included, which is any specimen randomly selected from a previous run to be repeated in the current run. This is used to measure between-run reproducibility. A negative control, such as water used during the PCR setup, could also be included. Another important control which we add is the bacterial mock community control. This control has a predefined bacterial profile, in other words, the bacteria included as well as their relative abundances are known. So this control can be used to determine how accurately the data that you get out represent the information that you put in. These bacterial mock community controls can be added in the form of a mixture of bacterial cells during the extraction step. This way, you could determine how efficiently your DNA extraction method is extracting DNA from the community at hand. But you can also include these bacterial mock community controls to measure PCR and sequencing efficiency. This is done by using a mixture of bacterial DNA for which the bacterial profile is known during the PCR steps. And finally, we also include a negative control in order to get an idea of the background introduced to specimens as early as sample collection. For example, nasopharyngeal swabs processed in our lab are stored in a preservation buffer. Hence, we include a neat preservation buffer without any sample as a negative control. This control then gets processed alongside the actual specimens from the start of the library preparation. In the event that your specimens are not exposed to a preservation buffer, I would suggest using a lysis buffer provided by the extraction kit implemented in your study as a negative control, again exposing it to all library preparation steps. Following the design of your plate layouts, identification of sequencing controls and DNA extraction, the next step would be to perform the PCRs targeting the 16S rRNA gene. During our studies, we have targeted the V4 of the 16S rRNA gene using a two-step PCR. We use slightly modified primers previously published by Caparasso et al. The PCR is performed in two steps. During step one, we amplify the V4 region. During step two, we add the sequencing adapter, sequencing priming region, random nucleotides, and a barcode to the amplicons using the PCR product from the first PCR as tempted in the second PCR. Following PCR, we purify the PCR products using Agincourt and Pure XP purification beads. We then quantify each of the libraries by measuring the concentration of fluorescently labeled double-stranded DNA. 
Each of the libraries are then pooled at equimolar concentrations. We then perform agarose gel electrophoresis on the pooled library and excise the product of interest, hereby further removing any primer dimers and non-specific binding. The last steps prior to sequencing are the cleaning of the excised gel product, determining the fragment size of the pooled library with an automated electrophoresis platform, and quantifying the pooled library using a qPCR. Finally, we prepare for sequencing using the Illumina MySeq V3600 cycle cartridge. We first denature the final pool of the DNA library using sodium hydroxide. We then dilute the quantified final pool of DNA to the desired concentration using the Illumina hybridization buffer. A 5 control is denatured and diluted. We then combine the sample library and the FIX control. The rule of thumb is to use a lower spike in of FIX for higher diversity libraries, whilst lower diversity libraries require larger spike ins. We finally prepare the flow cell and kit for the sequencing run, sequence and obtain our data, which is now ready for bioinformatics steps. So in summary, I would say that the take-home message from this part of the module is to carefully plan your experiment, Think about things such as extraction controls and sequencing controls. Also think about controls to measure reproducibility within a run and between runs if you are working with a large number of samples. Design your plate layouts from the start of your experiment to avoid reallocating into different positions on your 96 well plates at any step of your library workflow. The library preparation steps outlined in this set of slides is an in-house workflow and doesn't mean that workflows other than this should not be followed. Finally, you will obtain your sequencing data and you are now ready for your bioinformatics processes.